The Communist Party of India CPI Bharatiya Communist Party is the oldest communist party in India. There are different views on exactly when it was founded. The date maintained as the foundation day by the CPI is the 26th of December 1925. The Communist Party of India Marxist, which separated from the CPI in 1964 following ideological rift between China and Soviet Union, continues to claim having been founded in 1925. History Topic. Topic. Formation Topic. The Communist Party of India has officially stated that it was formed on 26 December 1925 at the first party conference in Kanpur, then Kanpur. But as per the version of CPI -M, the Communist Party of India was founded in Tashkent, Turkestan Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic on 17 October 1920, soon after the Second Congress of the Communist International. The founding members of the party were M. N. Roy, Evelyn Trent Roy Roy's wife, Abani Mukherjee, Rosa Fitting of Abani. S. wife, Muhammad Ali, Ahmed Hassan, Muhammad Shafiq Siddiqui, Rafiq Ahmed of Bhopal and MPBT. Acharya, and Sultan Ahmed Khan Tarin of Northwest Frontier Province. The CPI says that there were many communist groups formed by Indians with the help of foreigners in different parts of the world and the Tashkent group was only one of, contacts with Anushilan and Gigantar groups in Bengal. Small communist groups were formed in Bengal led by Muzaffar Ahmed, Bombay led by S. A. Dang, Madras led by Singaravalu Chetir, United Provinces led by Shakat Usmani and Punjab and Sindh led by Ghulam Hussain. However, only Usmani became a CPI party member. <laughs> Involvement in independence struggle during the 1920s and the early 1930s the party was badly organized, and in practice there were several communist groups working with limited national coordination. The British colonial authorities had banned all communist activity, which made the task of building a united party very difficult. Between 1921 and 1924 there were three conspiracy trials against the communist movement, first Peshawar conspiracy case, Meerut conspiracy case and the Kanpur Bolshevik conspiracy case. In the first three cases, Russian-trained Mahahir communists were put on trial. However, the Kanpur trial had more political impact. On 17 March 1924, M. N. Roy, S. A. Dang, Muzaffar Ahmed, Nalini Gupta, Shakat Usmani, Singaravalu Chetir, Ghulam Hussain and R. C. Sharma were charged, in Kanpur, now spelt Kanpur Bolshevik conspiracy case. The specific PIP charge was that they as communists were seeking to deprive the King Emperor of his sovereignty of British India, by complete separation of India from imperialistic Britain by a violent revolution." Pages of newspapers daily splashed sensational communist plans and people for the first time learned, on such a large scale, about communism and its doctrines and the aims of the Communist International in India. Singaravalu Chetir was released on account of illness. M. N. Roy was in Germany and R.C. Sharma in French Pondicherry, and therefore could not be arrested. Ghulam Hussain confessed that he had received money from the Russians in Kabul and was pardoned. Muzaffar Ahmed, Nalini Gupta, Shakat Usmani and Dang were sentenced for various terms of imprisonment. This case was responsible for actively introducing communism to a larger Indian audience. Dang was released from prison in 1927. Rahul Dev Pal was a prominent communist leader, on 25 December 1925 a communist conference was organized in Kanpur. Colonial authorities estimated that 500 persons took part in the conference. The conference was convened by a man called Satyabhakta. At the conference Satyabhakta argued for a national communism and against subordination under Comintern. Being outvoted by the other delegates, Satyabhakta left the conference venue in protest. The conference adopted the name. Communist Party of India. Groups such as Labour Kizan Party of Hindustan LKPH dissolved into the unified CPI. The émigré CPI, which probably had little organic character anyway, was effectively substituted by the organisation now operating inside India. 
Soon after the 1926 Conference of the Workers and Peasants Party of Bengal, the underground CPI directed its members to join the provincial workers and peasants parties. All open communist activities were carried out through workers and peasants parties. The Sixth Congress of the Communist International met in 1928. In 1927, the Kuomintang had turned on the Chinese Communists, which led to a review of the policy on forming alliances with the national bourgeoisie in the colonial countries. The colonial theses of the Sixth Comintern Congress called upon the Indian Communists to combat the national reformist leaders and to Unmask the national reformism of the Indian National Congress and oppose all phrases of the Swarajists, Gandhists, etc. about passive resistance. The Congress did, however, differentiate between the character of the Chinese Kuomintang and the Indian Swarajist Party, considering the latter as neither a reliable ally nor a direct enemy. The Congress called on the Indian Communists to utilize the contradictions between the national bourgeoisie and the British imperialists. The Congress also denounced the WPP. The 10th plenum of the Executive Committee of the Communist International, 3 July 1929 to 19 July 1929, directed the Indian Communists to break with WPP. When the Communists deserted it, the WPP fell apart. On 20 March 1929, arrests against WPP, CPI and other labor leaders were made in several parts of India, in what became known as the Meerut Conspiracy Case. The communist leadership was now put behind bars. The trial proceedings were to last for four years. As of 1934, the main centers of activity of CPI were Bombay, Calcutta and Punjab. The party had also begun extending its activities to Madras. A group of Andhra and Tamil students, amongst them P. Sundaraya, were recruited to the CPI by Amir Haider Khan. The party was reorganized in 1933, after the communist leaders from the Meerut trials were released. A central committee of the party was set up. In 1934 the party was accepted as the Indian section of the Communist International. When Indian left-wing elements formed the Congress Socialist Party in 1934, the CPI branded it as social fascist. The League Against Gandhism, initially known as the Gandhi Boycott Committee, was a political organization in Calcutta, founded by the underground Communist Party of India and others to launch militant anti-imperialist activities. The group took the name League Against Gandhism in 1934 in connection with the change of policy of the Comintern toward popular front politics. The Indian Communists changed their relation to the Indian National Congress. The Communists joined the Congress Socialist Party, which worked as the left wing of Congress. Through joining CSP, the CPI accepted the CSP demand for a constituent assembly, which it had denounced 2 years before. The CPI however analyzed that the demand for a constituent assembly would not be a substitute for Soviets. In July 1937, the first Kerala unit of CPI was founded at a clandestine meeting in Calicut. Five persons were present at the meeting, P. Krishna Pillai E.M.S. Nambudaripad, N.C. Saker, K. Damodaran and S.V. Gate. The first four were members of the CSP in Kerala. The latter, Gaite, was a CPI Central Committee member, who had arrived from Madras. Contacts between the CSP in Kerala and the CPI had begun in 1935, when P. Sundaraya CC member of CPI, based in Madras at the time met with M's and Krishna Pillai. Sundaraya and Gaite visited Kerala at several times and met with the CSP leaders there. The contacts were facilitated through the national meetings of the Congress, CSP and All India Kizan Sabha. In 1936-1937, the cooperation between socialists and communists reached its peak. At the Second Congress of the CSP, held in Meerut in January 1936, a thesis was adopted which declared that there was a need to build a united Indian Socialist Party based on Marxism-Leninism. At the third CSP Congress, held in Faizpur, several communists were included into the CSP National Executive Committee. In Kerala, communists won control over CSP, and for a brief period controlled Congress there. Two communists, E.M.S. Nambudaripad and Z.A. Ahmed, became All India Joint Secretaries of CSP. The CPI also had two other members inside the CSP executive. On the occasion of the 1940 Ramgar Congress Conference, CPI released a declaration called Proletarian Path, which sought to utilize the weakened state of the British Empire in the time of war and gave a call for general strike, no tax, no rent policies, and mobilizing for an armed revolutionary uprising. 
The National Executive of the CSP assembled at Ramgarh took a decision that all Communists were expelled from CSP. In July 1942, the CPI was legalized, as a result of Britain and the Soviet Union becoming allies against Nazi Germany. Communists strengthened their control over the All India Trade Union Congress. At the same time, Communists were politically cornered for their opposition to the Quit India movement. CPI contested the Provincial Legislative Assembly elections of 1946 of its own. It had candidates in 108 out of 1585 seats. It won in eight seats. In total the CPI vote counted 666,723, which should be seen with the backdrop that 86% of the adult population of India lacked voting rights. The party had contested three seats in Bengal, and won all of them. One CPI candidate, Samanth Lahiri, was elected to the Constituent Assembly. After independence During the period around and directly following independence in 1947, the internal situation in the party was chaotic. The party shifted rapidly between left-wing and right-wing positions. In February 1948, at the Second Party Congress in Calcutta, B. T. Ranadive was elected General Secretary of the party. The conference adopted the ''Programme of Democratic Revolution''. This programme included the first mention of struggle against caste injustice in a CPI document. In several areas the party led armed struggles against a series of local monarchs that were reluctant to give up their power. Such insurgencies took place in Tripura, Telangana and Kerala. The most important rebellion took place in Telangana, against the Nizam of Hyderabad. The communists built up a people's army and militia and controlled an area with a population of three million. The rebellion was brutally crushed and the party abandoned the policy of armed struggle. BTR was deposed and denounced as a left adventurist. In Manipur, the party became a force to reckon with through the agrarian struggles led by Jananetta Irawit Singh. Singh had joined CPI in 1946. At the 1951 Congress of the party, people's democracy was substituted by national democracy as the main slogan of the party. Communist Party was founded in Bihar in 1939. Post independence, Communist Party achieved success in Bihar, Bihar and Jharkhand. Communist Party conducted movements for land reform. Trade union movement was at its peak in Bihar in the 60s, 70s and 80s. Achievement of communists in Bihar placed the Communist Party in the forefront of left movement in India. Bihar produced some of the legendary leaders like Kashan leaders Sajanan Saraswati and Karyanand Sharma, intellectual giants like Jagannath Sarkar, Yogendra Sharma and Indradeep Sinha, mass leaders like Chandrasekhar Singh and Sunil Mukherjee, trade union leaders like Kedar Das and others. It was in Bihar that JP's total revolution was exposed and Communist Party under the leadership of Jagannath Sarkar fought total revolution and exposed its hollowness. Many streams. Selected essays by Jagannath Sarkar and reminiscing sketches, compiled by Gautam Sarkar, edited by Mitali Sarkar, first published, May 2010, Navakaranataka Publications Private. Limited, Bangalore. In the Mathila region of Bihar Bojendra Jha led the fight against the Mahants and Zamindars. He later went on the win parliamentary elections and was MP for seven terms. In early 1950s young communist leadership was uniting textile workers, bank employees and unorganized sector workers to ensure mass support in North India. National leaders like S. A. Dang, Chandra Rajaswara Rao and P. K. Vasudevan Nair were encouraging them and supporting the idea despite their differences on the execution. Firebrand communist leaders like Homi F. Daji, Guru Radha Kishan, H. L. Parwana, Sarju Pandi, Darshan Singh Canadian and Avtar Singh Malhotra were emerging between the masses and the working class in particular. This was the first leadership of communists that was very close to the masses and people consider them champions of the cause of the workers and the poor. In Delhi, May Day Majdor Devas or My Devas was organized at Chandni Chowk Gandagar in such a manner that demonstrates the unity between all the factions of working classes and ignite the passion for communist movement in the northern part of India. In 1952, CPI became the first leading opposition party in the Lok Sabha, while the Indian National Congress was in power. Note, at this time, there was no CPI and both were united. 
Communist movement or CPI in particular emerged as a front-runner after Guru Radha Kishan undertook a fast unto death for 24 days to promote the cause of textile workers in Delhi. Till then it was a public misconception that communists are revolutionaries with arms in their hands and workers and their families were afraid to get associated with the communists but this act mobilized general public in the favor of communist movement as a whole. During this period people with their families used to visit Darna Stahl to encourage CPI cadre. This model of selflessness for the society worked for the CPI far more than what was expected. This trend was followed by almost all other state units of the party in the Hindi heartland. Communist Party-related trade union AITUC became a prominent force to unite the workers in textile, municipal and unorganized sectors. The first labor union in unorganized sector was also emerged in the leadership of comrade Guru Radha Kishan during this period in Delhi's Siddhar Bazar area. This movement of mass polarization of workers in the favor of CPI worked effectively in Delhi and paved the way for great success of CPI in the elections in working class dominated areas in Delhi. Comrade Gangadhar Adhikari and EMS. Nambudaripad applauded this brigade of dynamic comrades for their selfless approach and organizational capabilities. This brigade of firebrand communists gained more prominence when Telangana hero Chandra Rajaswara Rao rose to be General Secretary of the Communist Party of India. In the Travancore Cochin Legislative Assembly election, 1952, Communist Party was banned, so it couldn't take part in the election process. In the general elections in 1957, the CPI emerged as the largest opposition party. In 1957, the CPI won the state elections in Kerala. This was the first time that an opposition party won control over an Indian state. EMS Nambudaripad became chief minister. At the 1957 International Meeting of Communist Parties in Moscow, the Communist Party of China directed criticism at the CPI for having formed a ministry in Kerala. Ideological differences lead to the split in the party in 1964 when two different party conferences were held, one of CPI and one of the Communist Party of India Marxist. There is a common misconception that the rift during the Sino-Indian War, when Communist Party of India proudly supported China in the war led to the 1962 split. In fact, the split was leftists versus rightists, rather than internationalists versus nationalists. The presence of nationalists in CPI, and internationalists P. Sundaraya, Jyoti Basu, and Harkishan Singh Surjit in the Communist Party of India Marxist proves this fact. During the period 1970–77, CPI was allied with the Congress Party. In Kerala, they formed a government together with Congress, with the CPI leader C. Achutha Menon as chief minister. After the fall of the regime of Indira Gandhi, CPI reoriented itself towards cooperation with CPI -M. In 1986, the CPI's leader in the Punjab and MLA in the Punjabi legislature Darshan Singh Canadian was assassinated by Sikh extremists. Then on 19 May 1987, Deepak Dewan, General Secretary of Punjab CPI -M, was murdered. Altogether about 200 communist leaders out of which most were Sikhs were killed by Sikh extremists in Punjab. <laughs> Present situation Topic. CPI was recognized by the Election Commission of India as a national party. To date, CPI happens to be the only national political party from India to have contested all the general elections using the same electoral symbol. Owing to a massive defeat in Indian general election, 2014 where the party saw its tally reduced to one MP, the Election Commission of India has sent a letter to CPI asking for reasons why its national party status should not be revoked. If similar performance is repeated in the next election, the CPI will no longer be a national party. On the national level they supported the Indian National Congress-led United Progressive Alliance government along with other parliamentary left parties, but without taking part in it. Upon attaining power in May 2004, the United Progressive Alliance formulated a program of action known as the Common Minimum Program. The left bases its support to the UPA on strict adherence to it. Provisions of the CMP mentioned to discontinue disinvestment, massive social sector outlays and an independent foreign policy. 
On 8 July 2008, Prakash Karat, General Secretary of CPI -M, announced that the left was withdrawing its support over the decision by the government to go ahead with the United States-India Peaceful Atomic Energy Cooperation Act. The left party's combination had been a staunch advocate of not proceeding with this deal citing national interests. In West Bengal it participates in the left front. It also participated in the state government in Manipur. In Kerala the party is part of Left Democratic Front. In Tripura the party is a partner of the Left Front, which governed the state till 2018. In Tamil Nadu it is part of the Progressive Democratic Alliance. It is involved in the Left Democratic Front in Maharashtra. The current General Secretary of CPI is S. Sudhakar Reddy. The principal mass organizations of the CPI are, All India Trade Union Congress All India Youth Federation All India Students Federation National Federation of Indian Women All India Kizan Sabha Peasants Organization Bharatiya Ket Mazdoor Union Agricultural Workers. All India State Government Employees Federation State Government Employees Topic Notable Leaders Topic N. E. Balaram, Founding Leader of the Communist Movement in Kerala, India Mohit Banerjee Mohit Bandopadhyay 1912-1961 M. N. Govindan Nair, Kerala State General Secretary during the First Communist Ministry and a Freedom Fighter C. Achutha Menon, Finance Minister in First Kerala Ministry Later Chief Minister T. V. Thomas, Minister in First Kerala Ministry M. Kalyanasundaram Tamil Nadu P. K. Vasudevan Nair, ex. Chief Minister of Kerala Indrajit Gupta, parliamentarian, former General Secretary and a former Central Minister Bhupesh Gupta, parliamentarian Ajoy Ghosh, last General Secretary of Unified CPI, Freedom Fighter Chandra Rajaswara Rao, former General Secretary, Telangana Freedom Fighter Jagannath Sarkar, former National Secretary, Freedom Fighter, Builder of Communist Movement in Bihar and Jharkhand Gita Mukherjee, parliamentarian and former President of National Federation of Indian Women Ardhendu Bhutan. Sean Barden, former General Secretary Chaturanan Mishra Parliamentarian and former Central Minister of India Suravaram Sudhakar Reddy, current General Secretary of the Party D. Raja, Parliamentarian and Secretary of the Party Shripad Amrit Dang, Freedom Fighter and former Chairman of the Party Hijam Irabat, Founder Leader of CPI in Manipur P. S. Srinivasan, former Minister of Kerala C. K. Chandrapan, Parliamentarian and former Kerala State Secretary of the Party Panian Ravindran, former Kerala State State Secretary of the Party Kanam Rajendran, current Kerala State Secretary of the Party Nalakanu, Parliamentarian and former Tamil Nadu State Secretary of the Party D. Pandian, Parliamentarian and former Tamil Nadu State Secretary Benoy Viswam, former Minister in the Government of Kerala Thapal Basi, writer, film director and Parliamentarian Puran Chand Joshi, first General Secretary of the Communist Party of India Veliam Bargavan, Parliamentarian and former Kerala State Secretary of the Party E. Chandrasekharan Nair, senior leader and former minister in the government of Kerala Ramendra Kumar, former parliamentarian, national executive member, national president AITUC Megraj Tawar, Udaipur district secretary Gavine Pansar, prominent activist and lawyer R. Sugathan, prominent trade unionist, mass leader and member of Kerala Legislative Assembly Topic Lok Sabha election Tally Topic Asterisk, 12 seats in Assam and one in Meghalaya did not vote. Topic. State election results Topic. Results from the Election Commission of India website. Results do not deal with partitions of states Bihar was bifurcated after the 2000 election, creating Jharkhand, defections and by-elections during the mandate period. Topic. Party Congress Topic. Topic. See also Topic. See also, List of political parties in India, Politics of India, List of Communist Parties Calcutta Thesis Communist Ghadar Party of India Communist Party of Bangladesh Indian Communist Party Sen. Darshan Singh Canadian Malayapuram Singaravalu Chettier S.A. Dang Indrajit Gupta Guru Radha Kishan Ajakodan Raghavan Jagannath Sarkar Manakuntala Sen Pandit Karyanand Sharma Chandrasekhar Singh Indradeep Sinha Marxist League India. 
Topic. Footnotes. Topic. Topic. Further reading. Topic. N. E. Balaram, A Short History of the Communist Party of India. Kozakode, Kananur, India, Prabhat Book House, 1967. John H. Kautsky, Moscow and the Communist Party of India, A Study in the Postwar Evolution of International Communist Strategy. New York, MIT Press, 1956. M. R. Masani, The Communist Party of India, A Short History. New York, Macmillan, 1954. Samarin Roy, The Twice-Born Heretic, M. N. Roy and the Comintern. Calcutta, Firma K. L. M. Private, 1986. Wendy Singer. Peasants and the Peoples of the East, Indians and the Rhetoric of the Comintern. In Tim Rees and Andrew Thorpe, International Communism and the Communist International, 1919-43. Manchester, Manchester University Press, 1998. G. Adhikari ed., Documents of the History of the Communist Party of India, Vol. 1, 1917-1922. New Delhi, People's Publishing House, 1971. G. Adhikari ed., Documents of the History of the Communist Party of India, Vol. 2, 1923-1925. New Delhi, People's Publishing House, 1974. V. B. Karnak, ed., Indian Communist Party Documents, 1930-1956. Bombay, Democratic Research Service, Institute of Public Relations, 1957. External links Official website <inaudible>